Hello, everybody. Welcome, Jen. Lewis, thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to talk about how to make lots of money with, in portrait photography using Fundy Designer. And uh, I hear you're super swamped right now, which is awesome. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I've got a lot of um, my senior volume was low in the fall and they're making up for it in the spring. Like I've nice. got all these people who are like, oh no, my kid's a senior. I still need to do that. So <laughs> it's been great. I've had a lot more seniors in the spring than I normally do. Nice. And if really busy with corporate stuff too. So it's just been busy all around. So what we'd like to do is we are going to start off with Jen's presentation. Thanks for being here, everybody. I'm excited. All right, so we are going live there. So that is all good. And we will start playing the presentation right now. Hey guys, I am Jen with Jen Lewis Photography and I'm a high school senior photographer based in Clemens, North Carolina. And I've been in business almost 14 years now. And almost 14 years ago, I was, um, I started out shoot and burning for $55 a session. Um, I know it was big time uh, back then. So um, I was photographing um, my clients and burning a CD of a hundred images edited in iPhoto because I was really talented and they were terrible. Nobody, um, I feel like I owe all of those people a reshoot now. Um, <clears throat> and I was giving them the CD with all their images on it. And I have uh, learned a couple of things. I'm now um, still photogra I'm photographing high school seniors and averaging about $5,000 uh, sales per session. We're going to talk about how I do that, how I maintain that sales average using Fundy. Fundy is my entire sales workflow and Fundy is often associated with weddings and wedding photographers because you're building albums and selling wall art and things like that with Fundy. Um, but I make a very good living with Fundy uh, for my high school seniors. So we're going to talk about how to keep your clients from ghosting you after their session. I don't know if you guys have ever had that happen, but I had about once or twice a year before I changed my process, about once or twice a year, I would have a session where I'd have a senior who would, they'd book me, they'd pay the session fee, they'd come in, they'd get their hair and makeup done, we'd do the whole session, and my senior experience sessions are about three hours, and so I'm putting a lot of time into these clients, and then they would ghost me, and I would never be able to get them in for an ordering session, and I never understood why somebody would put that kind of time into um, doing this entire session and then never even coming in to see their images. It absolutely killed me um, to not be able to show because some of them were great sessions and they never did come in to see their images. So that's one of the problems that I wanted to be able to solve. Um, and like I said, it only happened like once a year, sometimes twice if it was a rough year. Um, it didn't happen very often, but it really bothered me when it did. And so I wanted to have, um, you know, some sort of, payment pre, you know, minimum order requirement, something like that. So what I've developed is a system to have a minimum order requirement without calling it a minimum order requirement. Um, if you're like me, I'm one of those people who I'm going to say to a photographer, like, you're really going to make me spend a thousand dollars or whatever your minimum order is, even if I don't like the photos. So I'm going to be very anti minimum order requirement as far as the term itself. Um, but I do have one. I just put it a different way. So it doesn't uh, get people going like it would for me. So um, I try to think about what would appeal to my clients. And uh, so I've developed a system for that. So we're going to talk about that and how to keep your clients from ghosting you and other obstacles um, that you may run into on your sales journey. So um, let's get started with that. So it is all about education. I am 1 million percent a believer in in-person consultations. So I do an in-person consultation. I will not book a client without seeing them in person first, having them come into the studio. Um, if you don't have a studio, it's okay. I started without a studio. I was doing it um, without one. And there are a lot of options that um, you can use, um, you can barter space with another, you know, business that may have some sort of a meeting room or something like that that you can use. You can use a local coffee shop or hotel lobby or things like that. Um, and I mean, I met in my home. I had a, an area set aside in my home for a while um, that I used only be safe about it, please. So only if it was like, you know, a friend of a friend type thing um, where I felt comfortable. I would also sometimes meet people in their homes, um, that sort of thing. But a public place is always a good option. So anyway, I want them to come in for an in-person consult. And, you know, are there photographers out there who are making a good living um, with doing 
phone consults only? Absolutely, they are. There are plenty that are doing really well and they only do phone consults and that is fine. However, if you are having some sort of a problem in your process and you're not sure what's going on, it's likely a communication breakdown somewhere. And for that reason, I would say, let's go back and look at your consultation. Any of your communication with a client from the very beginning, you have to be super, super clear with any communication with your client. Because as we all know, if you send them something and say, hey, read over this and we'll talk in a couple of days, they are not going to read it. People never read anything. So anyway, so I always like to do in-person consultation. I like to be face-to-face -face with somebody. I want to know that they're paying attention to me and not paying attention to the toddler in the corner of the room getting into something they're not supposed to or watching TV or scrolling Facebook while I'm talking or something like that. I want to know that they're listening and that they're paying attention, that they're understanding what I'm telling them. So I like an in-person consultation so I can have 100% of their attention. So I like to um, have them come into the studio. We're going to talk about their vision for their shoot. We're going to talk about um, they're going to get a chance to get hands-on with the samples that uh, of the product that I offer and I'm going to answer any questions they might have but absolutely number one and this starts from that first concept from that first inquiry whether it's um, email or phone call or whatever it might be I'm going to build a connection with a client I'm going to start building that trust with the client because people don't do business with businesses people do business with people people that they know like and trust and I want to be that person so I'm gonna build some sort of a connection with a client um, I'm gonna start with asking them about their kid obviously if their kids the one coming to me then I'm gonna ask them you know where their kid goes to school if they have you know what kind of hobbies if they play any sports or instruments or anything like that and I'm gonna make some sort of a connection I'm lucky I have a high school kid um, who is a senior this year so it makes it easy for me but even if you don't you know make some sort of a connection with a client you don't have to lie to them but you know maybe they play piano maybe you played piano when you were a kid something just make some sort of a connection um, with those clients and once you start to build that rapport they're gonna that's gonna build trust with those clients and it's a lot harder for somebody to say no to people they like um, than it is for them to say no to a business so um, just start building that connection so I'm gonna have them come in um, for that uh, consultation and we are going to um, we're going to go over all those things the client's vision for their shoot basically I want to create value because um, you know value uh, things are only expensive in the absence of value so if, if they don't value it then they're good they are going to think it's more expensive but if you are showing them why you know why you're valuable and all the things that you offer and they're saying you're shining personality and you know they're understanding the experience that you offer and everything um, that makes a huge difference so we're going to talk about their client for their the client's vision for their shoot we're going to talk about their wants and their needs and i'm going to let them know how i can fulfill those wants and needs that they have uh, for their portrait session we're going to talk about what they want to do with their images and typically they have no idea what they want to do with their images especially high school seniors so that's another thing that's different with wedding clients wedding clients they may know they want an album or wall art or something like that a lot of times for our senior clients a lot of times they've never had portrait sessions done before which is another thing I'm gonna ask them I'm gonna ask them if they've ever had a professional portrait session done I'm gonna ask them if they have you know portraits hung in their home so one of the questions that I'm asking them is if they've had a professional portrait session done I want to know about that session I want to know what they liked about it what they didn't like about it they may say something like you know we love the pictures but we were you know a little uncomfortable because as she was photographing us she didn't give us much direction and we didn't know if we were doing it right or you know we didn't have you know we we wanted some more help posing because we weren't really sure what to do with our hands right so you know that's um, something that they really um, you know that they really needed more direction so I'm making mental notes you know absolutely like make sure you give them lots of direction on posing and confirming you know reaffirming their um, that they're doing great so I'm making notes like that if they have portraits hung in their home then that's another step um, in the right direction that means that they're gonna be an easier sell if you will um, because they already value professional portraits enough to have them hung in their home um, a lot of clients if they've had professional portraits done they may say nope never got any printed I have a flash drive or a CD or you know download on my computer or something like that but th we never got around to getting them printed so I'm already you know I'm making mental notes because 
when they're not sure about the printing and that kind of thing, that's going to be another, um, you know, another way for me to uh, create value for them is that I'm going to take care of all of that for them. Because, you know, you remember that last session you had, you never got any printed. This is, I'm a full service studio. I'm going to help you from the time we design your session all the way until you have beautiful printed products in your hands. So um, I want to go through all of that with them. So I want to make sure we're fulfilling those needs. Um, you always want to make sure you outline your entire process really, really clearly so there's no room for confusion on that. Um, if you're saying right now, I can't get them to come in for a consultation. <laughs> I've heard that a lot. Um, so if you can get them to come in for 30 or 45 minutes, they're likely not your client. If I'm going to spend, you know, two or three or four thousand dollars with a photographer, I want to meet them first. I want to know that they have a good personality because I'm, you know, I'm depending on that person to, um, you know, to make sure that they get the best out of my family or my senior or whoever it might be. And I want to make sure that we connect well. I want to make sure that, you know, that I feel confident in them because I'm going to hand them a lot of money and hard earned money, you know? So, um, if they're not going to, if they're not willing to meet for 30 or 45 minutes, they're probably not your client. Um, if they're just going to ask, you know, what everybody asks when they call, how much is it? <laughs> if they're just asking that and they're not willing to, you know, put any more into it and they're not willing to listen to how you're different and that sort of thing, um, then, you know, it's okay to let them go. I will give them the information that's on my website. I will give them my starting prices, um, which I'll get into, but create a fee starting $950 up to $5,000. I'll give them the starting prices of my albums and my wall art, um, but anything else they need to come in for because you know that way I can customize each um, I'm all a la carte I don't do packages so we'll talk about that but I customize it uh, all to each client and so you know we want to sit down and chat and ask uh, you know I'll ask them questions and that sort of thing to figure out their actual needs so there's no way for me to quantify you know how much is it so because it can be it can be a big range um, so once you get them to meet you for a consult the first thing I go over is I always want to tell them my why. I want to tell them my why for um, photographing seniors, and I want to tell them my why for prints and products. So um, I don't have time to get into all that today, but I explain my why because I want them to know that I have their best interests in mind. Um, however, I do keep that short because, you know, you always want to listen more than you talk. So I keep that part short. I just want them to know I have their best interests in mind, and we talk about their vision for their shoot. We talk about whether, you know, there's something that they've seen of my work that they love, what kind of locations they might be looking at, if they have a hobby or an interest store or something like that that they want to incorporate in their session. Personally, I I customize every session to each senior that comes in, so they don't look cookie cutter, they don't all look the same, they are all based on that senior's interests and hobbies and that sort of thing. Um, we want to talk about what they want to do with their images. Again, they've usually only thought as far as maybe posting some on social media. Um, so this is planting a seed and, you know, getting that started. A lot of times they don't know their options. So if they haven't had professional portraits done especially, or if they've gone to someone who's shoot and burns, they don't know about these heirloom quality albums and, you know, the metal wall art and the acrylic wall art and all these things that we can offer now. Um, they don't even know that those are options. So I'm going to do a little show and tell around the studio and I'm going to show them the wall art and I'm going to talk about sizing. Um, I measure everything on my product menu by the long edge. So I'll talk about the 30 inch um, portraits and the 40 inch portraits and, and that sort of thing. And we're talking about size because I always tell them I want to help them properly fill their space. And I let them know when I show them the 16 by 24, I say this is a 24 inch portrait. If you put this above a couch, it's going to look like a postage stamp. So I'm always talking about sizing and properly filling space. So I give them a little show and tell around. I do offer an in-home consult as well. This is not to take the place of the consultation at my studio, although if you don't have a studio, that's a good option. Um, but this is not to take a, the place of the consultation at my studio. This is after the consult at my studio. If they say, you know, I don't really know what I want. I don't know what I want to hang. I've got some wall space, but I don't know what would look good where. And, you know, that kind of thing. I offer to go to their home and I let them know, you know, it's a complimentary service that I, you know, I'd be glad to come by and help you look at your wall space and figure out where, you know, some wall art might look good or a gallery wall, take some measurements, take some photos, and then I can use my software 
at your ordering session to show you what those images will look like in your home. And they love that. And let me tell you, anytime that I can actually get into someone's home, I can find spaces for wall art that they never knew they had. So um, it's always, always, always a better sale if I can uh, go in their home and help them measure and take photos and things like that. Partly because I can show them ideas like maybe they've never thought about putting portraits in a dining room before or their home office or something like that. Also, because I'm there and I'm able to measure the spaces and I'm able to take photos of the spaces and then use Fundy to show them what their wall art will look like on their walls. They can see that the tones, the color tones from the from the photographs match their living room really well or that they go together really well or yes, that size is perfect and it gives the client confidence whenever you can show them what it's gonna look like in their home, on their walls, at the proper sizing because you've calibrated your software, that always gives them confidence and spend that money with you because they know it's going to look good. So um, that is something I always try to do. Um, and most clients don't take me up on it, but the ones that do, um, that just want that extra little bit of help, I think a lot of them don't take me up on it because they don't want to put me out. But I'm like, seriously, I, I don't mind at all. It's, it's easy to do. It doesn't take long. So um, anyway, I always offer that. And, uh, and the clients that take me up on it are usually very happy with um they're always very happy with what happens there. So after I've created all this value, I'm going to show them the product menu. Um, and I call it a product menu um, because just like when we're in a nice restaurant, there's no dollar signs on it. And we don't say anything about pricing. We tell them, you know, I say, this is the product menu. We've talked about the products that I offer. This is a product menu that shows everything that I offer in the various sizes. I'm going to give you a minute to look at this. Let me know if you have any questions. And then I usually keep myself busy. Um, go grab bottles of water or something like that while they're taking a look at that. So, sorry guys. <laughs> um, so uh, this is just something I put together in Fundy. Again, I mentioned um, the dining room and uh, this is one of my clients. So if you ever have an only child as a senior, <laughs> that's when you can uh, typically sell quite a bit of wall art um, with that. So we're gonna talk a little bit about pricing. So this is, um, we're gonna go over what, um, where I came up with the process that I use now for my pricing and why it works for me. So um, we'll talk about the three different um, main types of of pricing. So there are traditional collections. Um, there is what's called create a package or create a collection and a la carte. So traditional collections, everything has pros and cons. Traditional collections, clients ask for them because they assume that it's going to save them money. So that's, um, you know, it can make decisions easier if they have a hard time deciding. They just, you know, pick a collection. As we all know, most people pick the middle collection, right? So they can, it can make decisions easier um, so they feel like they're not as stressed out. Um, and it can also control your minimum sale. If your lowest collection is $1,400, then that's going to be your minimum sale. So there are some pros to that for sure. Cons, dealing with swaps. So for one, I hate mathing. So I do not want to um, deal with swaps. I don't want them to say, you know, this one comes with a, you know, 36 inch print, but we really only need a 30 inch print. Or this one comes with a 30 inch print. We really want a 36 inch. What would it cost to change that out or something like that? You know, it's almost what they want, but not quite. So um, it can also make it more difficult for your clients to decide if you don't have a collection that meets their needs, if you don't have something that lines up exactly, you know, what they had in mind. I've had clients buy four albums. I've had clients buy seven pieces of wall art and no albums. <laughs> I've had clients do a lot of things that I would have never put in a collection. So, um, you know, and you can say something like, well, I offer the smaller collection and then they can add on a la carte. But honestly, how often do they really add on extra a la carte? If they get a collection, they pick a collection, they buy it and they feel like they're done, especially if it's the top collection. So my highest sale right now was about $11,000 for a high school senior. I think that's, that's pretty decent. So, however, I would have never had an $11,000 collection. I would have never thought anybody in their right mind would spend $11,000 on senior portraits. But that's, you know, it happens. People have different wants and different needs. And so, um, you know, if I had 
made collections when I first started photographing seniors, my highest collection would have probably been about three thousand dollars, and which is well below what my average is currently. So, um, you know, you can actually top yourself out. You can, you know, you can limit yourself and cap your own sale by offering collections because there are people who will keep going but again if they buy the top collection even if it doesn't include everything they feel like they bought it all because they bought the top the biggest collection so it can cap your sale you want to be careful with that so the create your own collection if you're not familiar with this um i'll try to keep it simple but basically it's when you know a photographer says okay if you buy at least one album at least one piece of wall art at least one uh, of the gift prints and at least one specialty item, um, then you've created your own collection and you get everything at a reduced rate. So it's usually about 20% less than if you buy them all separately. So they're letting you create your own collection. So of course there are pros to this. Um, it allows clients to choose what they want. They you know they can choose their size and their their medium of like the wall art if they want canvas or metal or something like that. Um, so they can choose what they want in the collection while making them happy by still providing a discount. Um, you can still set a minimum order um, with saying, okay, if they bought the smallest album, if they bought the smallest piece of wall art, if they bought the smallest gift print, and you know, and et cetera, then I know I would still make X amount of dollars. So you can still have a minimum order um, that you can meet that without having the same minimum order required. You can easily adjust your product menu, which is another um, con of, collections because if you start changing collections you have to remath everything and again mathing is not my strong point um, but you have to you know figure out everything all over again if you change a collection if you change something with a create a collection it's really easy to swap things out make changes add things take them out whatever so um, whether it's you know categories variety of products you know the discounts or what have you so um, the cons though so I actually did create your own collection for, um, gosh, I guess uh, two years, maybe three, something like that. And it served its purpose while I was using it um, until I got into the uh, target market that I was aiming for. So um, you're giving a discount on products without necessarily needing to. So I, um, once I started getting into my target market, I would do things like, um, because I kept it really simple, I said, if you buy one from each of these three categories, then you get a 20% discount. So um, I, I was getting into clients who were spending four or $5,000, so I would start adding it up and I would say, okay, here's your total, it'd be like $5,000, and here's the 20% you saved by creating a collection. And they would say, oh my gosh, I totally forgot that I, I got that discount. And I'm like, I just gave them a thousand dollars off that they forgot that they got. And it's a thousand dollars that could have been in my pocket. I didn't even need to give them a discount. They were buying what they wanted and they weren't doing it because I was offering them a discount. So um, that really, that bit me. <laughs> so the other thing that happened um, that uh, the discount can sometimes cost you more money out of your pocket. So if you're not good at mathing like me, <laughs> um, you could do things like I had one client who ended up spending so much in the other categories that by purchasing a piece of wall art that she was not planning to get and getting that 20% discount, it actually got her, her order was less expensive than it would have been by not adding the wall art. So that 20% that I took off um, paid her for the wall art and took more money out of my pocket. So I basically gave her the wall art for free and got um, less money out of the order. So um, that really bit me as well. So if you're doing creative collection, make sure you're better at math than I am. <laughs> so, um, so as far as a la carte, and this is why I do this, um, it's simple. So it allows them to choose what they want. Um, you don't have to worry about anybody wanting to swap anything. You can easily adjust your products menu at any time. You're not giving discounts. So one of the things that I always say, if you want to incentivize a client, do not discount, add value. So um, you're not giving any discounts. Uh, you can do things like you can incentivize them because I'm saying add value instead of discounting. You can incentivize them with, um, a free gift at a certain sales level. If you spend $3,000, you get a free 8x10 Vivid Metal or whatever it might be. And so you can incentivize them to spend more and to get it to a certain spending level um, by offering that. So, um, and I always show the value of that on the product menu so they can see the value of what they're getting for free. Um, so, 
uh, we will move on. I know I'm talking fast, but I've got a lot I wanted to get through today. Um, so we will move on to my uh, creative fees that I created um, this system. Um, gosh, I guess it's been probably four years now um, that I created this system. So the um, my creative fees range from 950 to 5000 And basically, the more that they spend up front, the more they invest in the beginning, um, the more of it that goes to print credit. So all of them have a print credit. So at 950, they get a $650 print credit. You can read, this is on my website as well. Um, so in, you know, basically my clients a lot of times land between 2,500 and 3,500 um, because they want to get the maximum back that they can um, out of what they prepay. So um, if you're asking, do they write a check or give me a credit card and pay for these cre uh, creative fees before I ever pick up a camera? Yes. I am getting payment for this when they book. So at the consultation, this is the last part that we go over after they've seen the products menu. I let them know, you know, like, let's go ahead and look at dates on the calendar, and I let them choose their creative fee. So they're looking at the products menu, and they're saying, I know I'm going to get an album at least the standard size, and I know I'm going to get at least one piece of wall art, so I may as well do the $2,500 creative fee, um, and it gives me $2,400 back in print credit. So... The really cool thing about this, it gives me my minimum order requirement without having to say minimum order. So um, my uh, motto is I don't get out of bed for less than a thousand bucks. So I make sure my creative fee starts at 950 and they get $650 print credit out of that. Um, and so it goes up um, to the 5,000. The 5,000, it's just basically they get the entire thing back in print credit plus they get my travel fees uh, at no cost. They don't have to pay my travel fees for a senior expedition, which is my destination sessions. Um, so, but my clients typically fall between 2,500 and 3,500 with this. And it gives them that print credit. So when they come back, because money spent is money forgotten, they come back to order. And by this time, it's been weeks because they booked the session and they paid that initial creative fee. And they come back a few weeks later and they do the shoot. And they come back a week or week and a half later and they do the ordering session. So we're in a whole different paycheck, guys. So they come back um, and they've got their... Um, print credit and I've planted seeds all along the way saying, you know, and whatever you spend over your uh, over your print credit, you could just pay that on the day of the ordering session. So I'm letting them know so they're not capping it in their mind that, okay, I've only got $2,400 to spend. I'm letting them know, you know, this is where we start and then anything you go over that, you just pay on the day of the ordering session. So they are expecting to spend more. Um, I try to not make it sound like, <laughs> oh, you're going to spend so much more money than that. But that's what happens. They spend typically at least 50% um, and very often 100% more than what they spent at the um, for the creative fee itself. So my $3,500 clients um, that do that with a creative fee often end up around uh, 7000 for their order, 6800 7000 right around there. The ones that spend 2500 are usually between four and 5000 in their sales. So um, so it works out really well. So it's giving me a minimum order um, without telling them that there's a minimum order. It is um, money spent is money forgotten. So it's kind of breaking it up into payments. I don't do payments. If my clients ask me if I do payment plans, I say no, but Visa does. So I'm letting them know they work out their own payment plan with a credit card company or whatever um, they need to do, but I don't do payment plans. But it does split it up into payments for them. And the other thing is they never, ever, ever ghost me for an ordering session when we're doing it uh, with this system because, which is um, like I said, I've done this for about four years now, um, but they have spent a minimum of $950 plus tax to get in the door. They are not going to go on an ordering session. They have $650 in print credit to spend. So I've never had anybody not show up since I've implemented this system. So it works out really, really well. So let's keep going. I know you guys are probably going to have questions about this um, and that's... Uh, this is pre-recorded, of course, um, so I'm chilling on the uh, chat with you guys today, and whatever questions you have, I am happy to answer, um, but this system really, it keeps them, um, make sure they show up and they put 100% into their session. So um, this is, uh, I like controversial stuff, so um, it is okay to sell digital images. Um, this is uh, definitely a point of controversy with photographers all over the place, um, but there are some rules that I have with selling digital images. 
first of all, limit them. Don't ever say you can get all the digitals for X amount of dollars. Um, and I learned this the hard way. Every policy that I have, every process that I have is because of a mistake I made in the past. Um, so I do this, um, uh, I make sure I do this because I had one client who was absolutely amazing. I way overshot. I showed her way too many images in the gallery. And they were the ones that said, I'll just buy the gallery of images. And at the time, it was all the images. So I ended up retouching. I did have them take out, like I said, okay, can we at least take out the ones you don't like? <laughs> so I ended up getting it from like 136 down to like 96. Um, so I didn't have to retouch quite so many. But um, anyway, I also raised my prices on the digital images after that. So, um, so make sure you limit it. So for me, um, because I do shoot three hours for a senior session, I'm showing, um, or I'm, I'm limiting them to 50 images for their digital images. If they just want to buy the digital collection, um, they are limited to 50, so they can pick out 50. If they want more than that, they can certainly purchase them, but it is going to cost them a little bit more. Um, they are only printable to eight by 10, up to eight by 10. So, I am not going to, I want to have control over the wall art. I'm not going to just give them full res digital images where they can go print um, whatever they want at Costco or whatever's printing that now. So, um, so I want to have complete control over that. So they're only printable day by 10. Um, the only images, uh, let's see, I want to make sure I'm saying this right. Um, so if they buy the standalone, they can print up to 50 images. Um, if they are buying the digital image add-on to the album, which I'll talk about, um, then they can, it needs to be anything that's in the album. Um, so the standalone purchase, if they're just buying digital images, which honestly never happens. I talk so much about products. I talk about it on my social media. I talk about it on my website. I talk about it in the consultation that nobody really buys just the digital images anymore. Um, but... Uh, if they do, it's my happy price. It's my, this is what I'm happy walking away from. And if I don't sell any products at all, and all I sell are digital images, this is my happy price. So um, the other way that they can get them is free with a $5,000 um, purchase. So that is my happy sale. If they spend $5,000 on products, they can get the digital images only that match what they've purchased in a printer product. So if all they got were seven pieces of wall art and it's a seven, it's a $5,000 sale, they get seven images. <laughs> um, and again, only printable day by 10. Um, so they are still not going to um, be able to take those and, and do, but if they want to do gift prints and that kind of thing, I'm okay with that. I don't like doing, <laughs> dealing with those a whole lot anyway. So, um, with the digital image add-on on with the album, um, the way I offer that is I offer that as um, anything that matches what's in the album, the entire collection, it has to be all or nothing. This is where a lot of people who do something similar go wrong in it, is they'll let clients pick just a handful, however many they want, or a collection of five or ten or whatever. They have to do the entire collection that matches the album. And I offer that for $30 an image. Um, if your jaw is dropped open right now, it's because that sounds really cheap. Well, guess what? It also sounds really cheap to my clients. So if you think about it, these are images I've already had to retouch. I have already done the work on, there is no, they're digital images, so there's no cost of goods in it. Um, the work's already done and they are finished. They've already bought an album and they are having to buy their wall art because they're only printable up to eight by 10 because those rules apply. The only printable eight by 10, all or nothing, only um, things that match what I'm already having to do the work on. So. All of those rules apply still. They're $30 each. My average, my average number of images in an album is 55. So that's $1,650 that I'm adding to my sale for absolutely no extra work and no extra cost of goods. All I'm doing is sending them uh, via the internet <laughs> and I'm sending them their images. And, um, and like I said, no extra work and it's an extra $1,650 on average. Um, I've made up to $2,300 on just adding the images that I've already done all the work on and they've already bought their other products and it's already a really nice sale and I'm adding that on there. So, um, so that's the way that I do digital image um, images on there. So the um, let's go ahead and get into uh, Fundy. Okay, guys, so we are looking at Fundy. I'm going to import some images real quick. So we're just going to click this little add photos in the bottom right corner. And I'm going to grab some images. 
from a uh, client session. And we're going to import those in uh, to the software. And it just takes a second. Um, well, maybe a little more than a second, um, but it just takes a couple of minutes to um, import everything in. And once you're in there, you can see these icons at the top. So what we're gonna really focus on right now is the album design on the left and then the gallery wall art design uh, next to it. So the album design is something, if you're not selling albums to every client already, and one of the things that I do to make sure I'm selling albums to every client is um, that is part of the education. I let them know um, in several different points of our contact I let them know like all clients get an album that's the easiest way to hang on to all of your favorite images and these are heirloom quality albums you can hand down through generations so um, I'm you know I'm letting them know that from the very beginning you know that all clients get an album it's just a given it's not um, you know I I don't say it's quite like that, but um, I let them know that uh, that's very typical. So it's which album do you want? Let's go ahead and select the images for your album, that kind of thing. So it's more of an assumption um, that they're going to get an album. I talk like they're getting an album until they tell me otherwise. And I sell albums to pretty much every client that walks in the door. I can't remember the last time I had a client that didn't purchase an album. I may have had one in like 2019 um, that didn't purchase an album, but um, it's it's pretty rare. So after we've imported all of the images, um, we are going to do a new album. So I'm going to show you guys um, how I do this, um, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on uh, selecting. So if you're not um, if you're not selling albums to every client, you can pre-design an album. It takes me like 10 minutes um, to design an album in the software. And so it's very worth that extra few minutes if you're not selling them already to go ahead and design. So um, I have my favorites uh, marked on here because I use Miller's and I get um, certain types of albums each time. So we're gonna look at like the, um, Actually, let's go down to the signature, um, the 15 by 10. That's my Lex album, and that's actually what this client purchased. Um, so I'm going to click Next. Um, and I always do my cover um, <laughs> export. I'm old school, so Andrew would give me a hard time about this, but I export to... Um, to, and upload into rows. I'm just, I know you can order direct through Fundy for Miller's. I know you can, Andrew. Um, I just, I'm a control freak. So anyway, so I'm just going to click the basic cover because I'll just upload the cover um, when I upload into rows and I'm going to click next. So um, I'm going to do an album name here and let's see. So um, now the way I do this, um, I know Andrew likes auto design. Um, the way I do this is I'm gonna grab some images um, that I think are gonna look good on a spread together and I'm going to uh, drop them in here. And so I'm gonna click, I'm gonna look at layouts and I'm gonna um, decide from there kind of what I want to do. You can drag them around. The really cool thing about version 10 is you can highlight this little yellow. You can just put your mouse over this uh, bar. It turns yellow and you can resize your images and make them look how you want to um, uh, by just dragging them around like that. So um, let's see. So if we wanted to, sorry, I've got all these little blocks in my way here. Um, so if we wanted to uh, give her a little bit more of a spotlight over here, or if we want to um, get their sizes to where her, her size is similar um, on these two, um, that sort of thing. So, um, and we can look at view to get, um, to look at them at a glance. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna open um, an album that I already did. Actually, before I do that, sorry guys, I'm jumping ahead. Um, so when I do the ordering session, um, we look at the images. I'm going to have my clients look at them and we're going to star the images. So if they are, um, if this is an image that, you know, I tell them, uh, if you've used, um, you know, other software and you're transitioning or something like that, um, you can, uh, these, you can use the star system. You can use the hearts. I like to use both. Um, because so I tell them if they love it, let me know, you know, that they love it. If they like it, um, they can say maybe if they don't care for it, they can say no. And I'm going to star it with either five if they love it, three if they like it, or one if they don't care for it. And we're going to go through their images and I'm going to put stars on them. Now, if we get to an image that they really like and um, they're like, oh my gosh, I love that. And I think it would look really good for wall art. I'm also going to click a heart here. And 
what I can do is when I'm finished, after I've got everything sorted, which I'll show you um, on this other um, screen here, I'm going to show you when we get them sorted, we are going, we can filter them and look at, how, you know, the ones that have five stars and the ones that have three stars and the ones that have one star um, and that sort of thing. So after we've got them filtered and so I can look at everything that has a heart on it which I've only got the two down here. This was a, this was another test. So we can look at everything that has um, five stars. So these all have five stars here. Um, and we can look at, if we wanted to look at the five stars and the three stars, we can do that. Um, so you can, um, you can look at anything you need to down here. You can look at um, if there are images after you've designed the album, if there are images that you um, have not used, you can look to see what uh, the unused images are that you didn't put in the album. Um, so we can filter that way. So these are the ones that didn't go in the album. Um, so you can uh, filter your images any way you need to. So I like to show them the five stars and say, these are all the images that you chose for your album. These are all the five star images. And then I'm going to um, show them the three star images and I'm like, these are your maybes. So now that we've seen your yeses, let's go ahead and look through your maybes and see if those are a yes or a no at this point. If we've already got some similar images, we can go ahead and put them in the no's. If you still just love that image and you want it to be in there, we'll put it in the yeses. And so I'll give those five stars and we'll sort them that way. And then at the end, when we've gotten um, through the album choices, then I'm going to show them wall art options. And I'm going to say, these are the ones that I put a heart with because you really love these and I think they'd look great in wall art. And and these are your options. So I also I like to pre-design um, I like to pre-design uh, wall art options for my clients. We are going to get this a second. I am uh, working my computer really hard tonight, um, and uh, because these will give them an idea. And I love using the gallery rooms for um, Fundy. So um, these, I can show them, you know, if they like the framed prints. And, you know, sometimes I like to um, grab images from the different outfits of the day. You know, if they have, you know, if they wore three different outfits, they may want something with um, one with each outfit in it. So I've got those in there. I like that Fundy gives you the sizes on here as well. So you can see exactly what you need um, to print for your client. And um, we have, so the first one, of course, is a room view of a living room. And if I can get my clients images, again, I do. I always ask them to send me images or, um, you know, to give me those ahead of time somehow. Um, and if not, we can use the stock rooms um, that are available in Fundy. So here we have images above a staircase. And um, these are all done in the same outfit. And then here we've um, mixed them up a little bit again um, for over the dining room. And here we've got the same outfit again. Um, I liked the wooded area with the, the wood grain in the, um, in the room here. So I like to be able to show them, show them what the sizes look like and that sort of thing. Because again, anytime that you can show your clients what it's gonna look like on a wall, um, even if you're using a stock room, something that might be similar to their room, then you're gonna be able to really um, gain a lot of, uh, of confidence with the client and um, be able to show them that. So, and you can um, change these around if you want to highlight it and you want to, you know, move it uh, to a different space. If you want to make the entire thing um, smaller or larger, anything like that, um, you can go in and you can change uh, the sizes right in here, if I can type. <laughs> and... Um, you know, and be able to make uh, changes individually like that. Um, so you can also click uh, layouts and you can look at um, layouts that are popular on here. Um, these are, so you can look if you wanted like the, um, if they wanted something smaller, they can look at all the um, 12 by eights. I don't offer that for wall sizes, but um, you can certainly do that. So you've got layouts in here just like you have um, for the um, for the albums. So once you learn how to design albums, that's one of the cool things about Fundy. A lot of things work um, the same way. So um, so you can use um, these are the designs that sell. And oops, we will move that over. So obviously this one's going to be a little bit large for that, but um, you get the idea of um, 
oops, you get the idea of what of how that works. So um, anyway, these are um, the collections that I might offer my clients and be able to show them. Um, and I'll show you what that album looks like as well. We'll flip back to the album. Oh, and these are the room views down here. So you can see the different rooms um, that are available. Um, I do have um, the pro enhancements, which gives me more room views. Um, I like having everything that comes in the design library. So I keep that pro enhancements going. So if you want to see a uh, closer up of what the album looks like here, um, I like to go by outfits and um, keep everything in chronological order. I don't mix them up. And so we, um, we go through here. This um, client, her twin sister passed away about three years ago. And um, so she, was, she wanted to include her in her senior portraits. So we made sure to do that. Um, and so it was a pretty emotional and moving um, day, including her. Um, you'll see those here in a second, too, where we had her. Um, a photo of her in here with her and then she had her portraits um, with her out there on location and we got a reflection of her reaching out to hold her hand in those sunglasses from a picture they had done um, a while back and her necklace and everything so anyway this was obviously uh, very special to my client um, it was a uh, you know important for them to um, get a lot of portraits from this session so um, anyway I am going to wrap this up because I think we have about hit our time here and um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up and let me know what questions you guys have if you um, want to uh, know more about how I sell in Fundy anything like that but pre-designing is your friend getting images from your clients ahead of time, going to their home, doing an in-person consult, uh, getting those uh, images yourself and measurements of their walls and everything so you can measure and show them what it's going to look like on their walls. Any of that is going to help you um, be able to sell. And I hope I've given you guys some tips that are helpful and I will see you soon. Thanks. How's everybody doing? So there were, just before we dive into some of the questions, there were some questions, uh, I think about the room views and pro enhancements. Let me just pull up the design library real quick so people can kind of see that. Um, and we will, uh, then we'll dive into some of the questions. I'm gonna share this, oops, I'm gonna share the screen. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. There we go, okay, all right. Okay, everybody can hear everybody, good. That's the, uh, the challenge with, with online stuff recently. Everybody's worried about hearing everybody. Okay, so uh, let me just share the screen real quick. I'm gonna share my desktop. All right, I think everybody can see this. So up here at the top, we have uh, the design library and everything accessible here. So you can, uh, access, we have a bunch of studio magazines and album designs here, card designs for save the date, uh, senior, et cetera. We can toggle the grad cards, uh, et cetera. Uh, music for your slideshow, wall collections. And here are the stock rooms, um, which people are talking about. So there are, I'm not sure how many there are. I think there's close to a hundred. And we just added a bunch of new ones uh, in here a bunch of uh, bedrooms and et cetera in here. So um, like, I think this is a new one right here. Uh, but anyway, they're in there. So that's where that's where you can get a, a bunch of stock rooms and that's all included with pro enhancements, which also includes the skin retouching and the online proofer. So, and we just added a bunch of, uh, what else did we add? We added a bunch of card designs and uh, magazines in January too. So, you know, a lot of good stuff in there. So let's kind of uh, talk about, I think one of the biggest questions, Jen, let me unshare my screen. There we go. One of the big questions was, how do you stop people printing? The, you know, what size are you giving the JPEG? Uh, which is kind of a loaded question, but I'll let you kind of address part of that. It is, but as Andrew knows really, really well, I am super lazy. I don't resize them. <laughs> they have already spent four or $5,000 with me on their album and their wall art. And they're buying their wall art through me because I told them they're only printable to eight by 10. So they're like, okay, well then we need to go ahead and get wall art. So they get their wall art, they've gotten their album. And after that, I don't really care. It's like, yeah. whatever, you know, they're not, typically my clients are not gonna go 
try to print something larger than that, you know, because they spend enough money with me. If they want it, they're just going to order it through me. Um, but if they, you know, and they trust me and all that stuff. So, but if they do, it's whatever. If they want to print an 11 by 14 for grandma with their eight by 10 digital, whatever, I don't care. I don't want them to print it and make it look like crap and tell people that I did it. So, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm like, plus, you know, again, being lazy, I just let it go. So I don't resize them. I don't tell clients that. They, as far as they know, I've resized them and they're going to look terrible if they try to print larger than eight by 10. But if they do it, I don't, it's whatever. So again, that's why everything, it's so important to price yourself well, because you have to make sure that you're getting your happy price. And, you know, when they walk out the door, you want to be happy with your sale. And, you know, somebody had asked about um, my, uh, at the point where I do free digital images and, um, you know, and I explained like, you know, it's $5,000, a $5,000 sale, get some free digitals of anything that they purchase in a printer product. I'm happy with five grand. That's my average sale. And I'm, that's my happy price. And if they spend that on just products, I'll give them the digitals. I've already had to do all the work. It's not costing me anything. It's just sending over the digitals after the retouch. So, you know, and again, they, they are aware that they're only printable day by 10. Yeah. And I think the, um, you know, I, th I think the, the main thing about that is that when we're selling a uh, really high quality product and we're leading with the print product, that kind of digital question, digital file, I want to print by myself just kind of goes away because you give the client such great service. Right. And right. like I said, most of them are going to order through me. They're not going to go try to do it themselves. They're going to be like, yep. oh, we need more prints. Call Jen. Because that's yep. what, I mean, those clients are the, they're not the DIY clients. <laughs> yeah. So they're the ones that want me to do everything for them and just hand it to them. And they're, they're happy with that. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. What are some of the, um, I think one of the biggest questions that people have is, you know, if, if you're wanting to produce this much profit off of clients, what are they buying? What are the best, best products to start? start with let's say let's say somebody attending here is not selling anything what should they start with uh selling to um that will have the most success out of the gate i sell albums to every single client i let them know that's the best way to hang on to all their favorite images so because they're you know when they're going to sit down and look through these images they're not going to be able to just narrow it down and be like oh these two are the ones i like you know it's going to be like these 35 or 50 or whatever the ones that i like so that's the best way to hang on to all their favorite images. So albums, absolutely. And I do eight by eight, 10 by 10 and 15 by 10. Um, the 10 by 10 sells uh, the most, but the 15 by 10 is a very close second. Um, I sell those almost as much as the 10 by 10. Eight by eight is pretty rare, um, but I mean, people order them and that's their, that, that's what they're there for. The, are the people that are a little on a little more of a budget and that's okay. Um, but yeah, albums, absolutely. I sell wall art to 90% of my clients. Um, and it's all about people want to know what people do. They don't, you know, especially if they've never had professional portraits done. They're like, what does everybody else do? What am I supposed to do? You know? So I tell them, and this works just pro tip. This works. If you're not selling anything at all, you can say, oh, people normally buy an album and two pieces of wall art. And then they're like, okay, I'll do that. And then all of a sudden it is what normally people do. <laughs> so yeah. it's, you know, they will listen to you. They just want to know what they're supposed to do. They don't yeah. know if they're yeah. due to professional portraits. Yeah. Two of my favorite phrases are most clients. Yes. <laughs> right. And then uh, the reason being that is, is uh, my joke is that everybody wants to be unique, just like everybody else. <laughs> That's why you were making fun of me. Before you were <laughs> so uh, I, um, so I hope that previous section answered, answered uh, Daniel's question that came in just as you were talking, how do you sell an album to every client? And it's really the fact that it's the best way to get all of the images they want right? Uh, because Absolutely. they couldn't afford to, to buy every image as a wall portrait. Yeah, I usually make a joke about it. I'll say, yep. you know, if you buy 57 wall portraits ever, it's going to kind of look like a shrine in your home. So you're probably better off going with an album. And you know, it yep. makes the point that they're not they're not going to be able to narrow down their favorites to just get some wall portraits. It's going to be a lot. So they, they always go with the album. So yeah. Um, and here's a, a question from Dave. Uh, David Leifer, I think I think it's David. I think he just missed the, missed the eye when he logged in, and um, it's it's kind of one of my soapbox rants is that um, talking about posting previews on Facebook, and you know my opinion is that you know if you 
post 25 photos two weeks before their ordering session that are fully retouched and look awesome, they're going to show up at their ordering session. They don't need anything because they've already been they've, they've already been satisfied emotionally with their photos. I am very, I have a very strong opinion about sneak peeks. I never, <laughs> ever, ever do them. <laughs> and the reason is, yeah. think of them like kids on Christmas morning. Yeah. When you, when that kid opens their first gift, that is their most excited point. They're like so excited. And with every gift they open after that, you know, some kids, the parents who overbuy for Christmas, <laughs> they <laughs> notice this, but the, the last gift, the kids are like, they don't even want to open it anymore. They're like, they're over it, you know? Yeah. And so there it's the same thing with clients. It's like that first image that they see, that's their most excited point. I don't want that to be when they're walking through the mall on their phone and they see it this big. I want it to be when they're in my studio, they see it large, how mm -hmm. I want them to purchase it. And mom is crying with a credit card in her hand. That's yeah. when I want them to see that first finished image because that's the highest point of excitement. Yeah. So for me, I absolutely will not post any sneak peeks. However, I'll take a picture of the back of the camera. I do a lot of like what you see and what I see where I'll show them, you know, it's a it's a ditch on the side of the road. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. this is what you see. And mm -hmm. I'll show the back of the camera. This is what I see you know, and that kind of thing. So I'll do stuff like that. I will um, sometimes take a picture of my screen when I'm calling images and I'm like, oh, so many favorites, you know, from, you know, K Katie session today or whatever. So I'll do mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and I'll do behind the scenes um, of the actual shoot and that, and that sort of thing. But um, never, ever, ever a finished sneak peek until after. The other thing too, is you don't want to post one that kids don't like, especially if you're photographing seniors. Teenage girls are weird. They'll be like, <laughs> oh my gosh. You know, it'll be like this yeah. gorgeous photo. The yeah. lighting is perfect. The girl looks amazing. And she'll be like, oh my gosh, my ear looks so weird in that. And I'm like, what? Your ear? What? You know, they're, they're really, really finicky. So I don't want to post one that they're not happy with because it is going to put a downer on the entire experience for them. So I let them pick the one that I preview. So they always get to choose mm -hmm. um, when they come in for their ordering session. I'm like, hey, which one was your favorite? I'll post it tonight. And they love doing that. So um, that's so, another reason. Uh, Natalie had a question come in from uh, Facebook comments. Do you do all of your own sales or do you have a staff? I do everything. I am a one man band. The only thing I have an assistant for is uh, when I'm shooting. I have an assistant always on the shoot because I use off camera flash and that sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, I'm a one man band. I do everything. So uh, Richard says one of the challenges of selling wall art of a senior is when other children in the house that don't have these cool shots uh, offer a free session to those other children. <laughs> yeah, so I actually do. I have, I'm like, Part of my senior experience session is you can bring your siblings to your session. Mm -hmm. And so this works really well for the seniors who, who have an older sibling and mom only got them like a couple eight by tens. And so I have the siblings come to the session only for like 15 minutes of our two and a half hour shoot. They come in for like 15 minutes. We've predetermined a location where, you know, what they would want on their walls, that kind of thing. And so the, the siblings show up. We get a few shots of the siblings together. We get shots of the siblings individually, all of them um, individually, and then they leave because we're not gonna let them steal the senior show. Um, but then, you know, so we kick them out, but then mom can do um, all kinds of things with all of these. So that typically sells uh, wall art for each of the siblings and then one of all the siblings together. So sometimes they'll just do one of all the siblings and then do the one of the senior. But if they haven't done for an older sibling, they'll usually do a wall art for them as well. And I think that's, uh, you know, that's such a great way to, you know, any business owner, no matter what business we're in, roadblocks have to be seen as an opportunity. Absolutely. I love it when they haven't done senior the sessions. Like, the sweet, kids. more money. <laughs> so, but I mean, it really, it really does. It's doing a service for your client and, you know, and then I've, you know, the bonus of getting some extra money in there too. But I've also had people schedule college senior graduation or, you know, college senior photos for their older ones who didn't do high school senior photos. So the sibling will come to the session and they'll have so much fun. And then when they're graduating from college, because they're the older sibling, then mom will do a session for them too. So they, you know, they feel included. So, um, so yeah, lots of ways to capitalize yeah. on that for sure. It's never and possible. Rebecca has a question, which we you kind of uh, answered in the presentation by showing, but she's with with wall art and room views and different layouts. What size images do you usually mock up, and what seems to sell for seniors? 
I don't show anything in my studio less than a 16 by 24. That's the smallest thing that I offer in wall art. Um, typically, if it's going to be, um, if it's going to be a gallery wall, if they're looking for multiples, which is more typical of, a, of an only child for seniors, yep. um, is to do multiples. And so those are usually um, anywhere like either 20 by 30 or 24 by 36 for the larger one. And mm -hmm. then something like 16 by 24 or um, 20 by 30s for the smaller one. So I just mock up some different options. And especially if I have a photo of their room and I'm able to show them what it's going to look like in their home. And, you know, it's whatever is going to fit best. But, um, but yeah, those are usually, um, I sell 30 by 40s, but that's usually only for a single. That's not usually for a gallery wall, so. Nice. Okay, so here uh, we have a question, and I'm going to try to answer. See if see if I understood correctly, and then you can tell me if I got it right or if I'm wrong. So, uh, CW Sangri, am I the only one still confused about the minimum order requirements and how she gets to a thousand dollar minimum? That without calling it that and making the client feel like they're buying before they see the images. So, my understanding is that when people book their session, they have multiple price point options. They can pay uh, a lower price point. I forget what they were. Maybe it's seven hundred dollars, and they get five hundred dollars print credit or print credit. If they uh, book it at thousand dollars, they get nine hundred. If they book it two thousand, they might get twenty two hundred dollars print credit. So when they're booking, the more they commit to the wall art, the more uh, they get uh, included, and so they're actually paying that fee up front based on their personal choice. Right. And that actually clarifies for me um, something, a question that I had come in earlier and I was trying to answer it. And now I understand where um, he was coming from on that. I, it is a minimum order requirement. It absolutely is. It's just, I, instead of saying, I, I think it's a psychological thing. Instead of saying your session fee is $250, but I'm going to make you spend at least a thousand it's you come in at a thousand bucks so it's still a minimum order requirement and it's still expecting them to pay before they see the images they're just going to trust me based on my previous work and that sort of thing my reputation but um and i know this is a little off of what you were saying but i'm just yeah. trying to clarify for the um other yeah so the big the big question. difference really is the prepayment they're pre-purchasing that right. requirement so yep. and when and when it's seen as a creative fee mm -hmm. um that includes a print credit, it's taken better. Just, it's a psychological thing. It's just, it's more accepted than if it's a session fee and then you have to get them to come back and spend at least that much. Also, the other reason I do it this way is because even if you have a minimum order requirement, if you have a $250 session fee and you're like, when you come back, you have to spend at least a thousand dollars, it's going to be harder to get people to come back in. But when they spend a thousand bucks already, they're coming to spend their money. <laughs> they've got credit. Yeah, they're going to come. Exactly. They've, so they've, they're they've, not going to go to you. Yeah, they've 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 given you money that they haven't used yet, and everybody wants to use exactly. money that they haven't used yet, right? So yeah, it's like a gift card that they get to use, yeah, for stuff. So they, um, so yeah, I don't have any problem with that. Um, but it is the same thing as a minimum order requirement. It's just it, like I said, the psychology on it's a little different. Mm -hmm. And you can see that screenshot that I showed was on my website, so you can look on my website. Um, and see the different levels. So it starts at 950 with a 650 print credit, and then mm -hmm. it goes up from there. And at 3500, they get the entire thing back in print credit. So yeah. So uh, Courtney has a good question, and I'm going to give a couple ideas for her, and then uh, maybe you can give some more. So Courtney says, "I haven't started finding my ideal clients that will spend IPS prices yet. Uh, would it be harder to find people willing to pay that much up front as someone willing?" To, uh, without really having my name out there. So one of the things that um, I think that a lot of photographers make the mistake of doing is not having photos of their products and their wall art mock-ups on their website, right? So having that on their website. So when people go to your website, that's initially what they see. They see album or photos in albums, photos on the wall. And additionally, using the wall art preview export as well as the album you know, preview exports for social media posts uh, as well as card design. So instead of just showing your images, show your images in the products you want to sell because people buy what they see, right? And so for only showing digital photos, they want to buy digital photos. Right, right? exactly. 
So, and you'll see that on my website. Um, there's like a how everything works, how it works sort of section on my website. And you can scroll down that and you'll see the mock-ups that I have um, using yeah. Fundy. I just used Fundy and exported it and threw that on my website. Yeah. To show what the wall art looks like on a wall in a room, you know, mm -hmm. it's not my room, it's a stock room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks I'm to Fundy for having those. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, yeah that's it definitely a good way. As far as the finding clients for that, I think um, with the prepayment, I do always mention that, you know, to get a thousand dollars off the bat, you're going to have to be well known in your area. You need to have a reputation. If you don't yep. have it, though, you can do the same system and start at a lower. So some of the people that I've mentored have started something, you know, it's something like, you know, 400 with a $200 print credit or things like that. Like it doesn't have to start at a thousand dollars. Mine didn't. When I first created the system, I started at 650 because I didn't know if my clients were going to freak out <laughs> and I didn't know. And it was like 650 to 2,500. And everybody was coming in at the 2,500. So what do you do when everybody's buying the largest one? You make larger ones. So um, so I dropped the smallest one and, and went higher up to 5,000 and it's been working great. But um, but when, you know, until you've established a reputation in your area where people trust you or they know who you are and that kind of thing, um, just start smaller. But I think the idea is still there, even yep. if you're starting at 400 or 450 or something like that, throwing a print credit in there. Yeah. So uh, one question from Facebook, if you don't mind sharing, um, what do your albums and wall art uh, price points look like? You know, I think that's sure. one of the big, um, big things that's difficult for people to ask or for people right. to start with. I'm, I'm okay with sharing mine, yeah. um, but you have to keep in mind that it all depends on not just your cost of goods, but you also have to keep in mind the amount of work it takes you. I have a workflow. My retouching workflow is super fast. Um, I do um, dodge and burn and frequency separation and the whole nine as much as it's needed on every single image. I do hand retouch all images. I don't outsource or anything like that, but I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> yeah. So I have a good workflow in place. And um, so, but it's um, my eight by eight is, um, my eight by eight is 950 for up to 35 images. Um, my 10 by 10 is 1495 um, for up to, um, 55 images and then up to 70 images for my 15 by 10 that's 21.95 and that's all basic covers that's no cover upgrades or page yep. upgrades or anything like that that's just for the basics so um but yeah 950 14.95 and 21.95 nice okay so we're gonna um we're gonna have to let jen go here because we've got to prepare for the next session with audrey willard so uh be sure to hop on with audrey but if you have any questions, is it okay for them to comment uh, on the video in the Fundy Storyteller group? And then uh, you could just go in and answer there. They can absolutely do that. Or if it's okay with you, Andrew, I know I posted my oh, you did, yeah. in the beginning. Yep. Um, so if you're, um, if you want to join my Facebook group, it's yep. Jen's Business Corner, Jen with two ends. So Jen's Business Corner, Andrew's in there. And yep. uh, anyway, you guys are welcome to uh, join Great that. Point. I'll get you approved in there and you can ask questions anytime you want in there. So, yep. So at the at the beginning of her presentation, you can rewatch. So Jen's business corner with two ends. You can hop in there for any business related questions. And then also remember, if, you're, if you need any help with Fundy Designer, we have a full time support staff. Just go onto the website or under the help menu to ask those questions. Uh, and uh, the team is happy to help you. Thank you again, Jen. Yeah, don't ask me technical fundy questions. <laughs> What's that answer? <laughs> so thank you again, Jen. We really appreciate it. Uh, so happy it's that you're out there staying busy and keep crushing it. And thank you for helping everybody else uh, get on their journey. I still owe you a beer for fundy because every time I there design you do. an album, I'm thanking you. <laughs> do, I get a, do I get a beer for every album you design? Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> We're going to need a long weekend for that one. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, let's let's give it a go. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks.